Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Jamario with the monthly video blog. And this, uh, this one is called uh, Return to Source, My Unexpected Adventures. And helping me out today here is council member and media maven Naraya, um, who is over there in the British Isles right now. And I'm actually in uh, Portland um, uh, visiting one of my brothers. And uh, the purpose of this video blog is just to share with you all um, some really unexpected events. Um, I, I had been in Europe, you know, I stayed in Europe after the uh, remarkable Kalanish experience where we had 28 people there for the lunar standstill. Um, and then after that, um, my wife and I uh, visited some other European countries and including an incredible, th which I'll report on at a, at a later time about the experiences in Finland that would require a, uh, a whole additional um, sharing. Um, but for a variety of reasons, um, we decided to cut our European time short. Um, uh, and that uh, mainly because it was so expensive, so over touristed, um, the money, the, it was just not that fun, uh, not much fun for a mm -hmm. lot of reasons. But getting a chance to leave early gave me a chance to do some things in the United States that I didn't think I was going to be able to do. And that's what I wanted to report on here, at least on for two of the, of the things that happened. And the most recent one, which I'm going to begin this um, discussion about, um, was an opportunity to return to actually the source back 43 years to the source of the what my life has been about um, since that time frame. And a, a series of very strange and I'll say miraculous experiences ensued where um, I had no idea. It's as if spirit was um, playing a trick on me, a good trick, where we thought, in fact, there, uh, I should mention here, there were um, uh, seven others with me. So we had a group of eight, including council members Mariana and, and also Mary Kern was there uh, with her partner, Chris. And uh, and also um, uh, uh, Shiva and and her partner Tony were there, so there were eight of us, and and everyone was up for an adventure. But I told them and Edmund, I think, right? Edmund, Pardon? Edmund, of course. Yes, yes. sorry, yeah, that's you, because Edmund. I counted, and what you were saying is seven. So I thought, hang on, hang on, who else was there? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And and, oh, right. and Edmund just got the call, you know, and he got a hold of Shiva. I hear you're doing this this thing, and can I come? And so. Actually, he was one of the um, main reasons why the, the most unexpected thing happened, uh, which is that um, we were going to just go to what is called Lower Panther Meadows. But there is this sign, and he took off to the right. He was the, actually the only other person who had been there before other than me uh, many, many years ago. He took off to the right. I'm looking at the sign. And I misread it, where one direction was Upper Panther Meadows, which is where I wanted to go, and the other said Gray Butte Trail. The thing that kind of messed with me, not only did I read it backwards, but I, uh, the place that I had my first Vision Quest experience was a place called Squaw Valley. Well, there is no sign whatsoever. We will, we will have to reiterate here for people to follow uh, because you are excited about this experience, but we are actually, I mean, you are actually now talking about Mount Shasta. Mount so, Shasta, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So this is where this is, uh, people well, might have followed previous. The whole, the uh, whole original uh, transmission stories. happened from a vision quest exactly. experience I had with John Halifax. I just needed to throw that in. So please Thank continue. You, uh, <laughs> in, in August of, of 1981. I had, and I, I, there was never the intent. I didn't think my knees would be able to handle actually trying to go back there again. But the weird thing is, there was no sign on any of the maps of this place called Squaw Valley. And so we were going down a trail that was not even the trail that I was thinking we were on. And it turns out that all the Squaw names have been changed to something else. And so actually we happened to be on this trail to go to what they renamed uh, Squaw Valley 
south gate <laughs> and we just kept hiking and hiking and hiking i didn't think i could do it and you know two and a half hours three hours later we arrived at the end of that trail and to my incredible surprise it was exactly the place that i had that first uh, 1981 experience in fact uh, let me just we, we can show some of the photos of this um uh uh so as we're as, uh, as we're looking at the photos, I'll just uh, saying what in back in 1981, um, the way this probably a group about 15. In fact, there are photos of that group on my own personal website, and and it turns out that um, back then in 1981, we were we led in on a on a on a dark night. During the night, we had no idea where we were hiking. And and so then we were put down next to a stream, middle of the night, had no idea where we were. And the next morning we we opened our eyes and we were in this remarkable valley. And, and this is a valley where there's a stream that comes right out of the mountain. And we were drinking the water right out of the stream. You can see on the right portion of the photo, this that's where we filled our water bottles actually. Um, and and it just there we were right at that place that started the whole thing in 1981. Uh, I couldn't believe it, um, uh, and it was just a miracle, including being able to hike in and hike out. I mean, it was a total of about five miles. It took you know two and a half hours or so to, but we didn't know where we were going. And then it turned out here I was at Squaw Valley, you know, and I uh, the, the the blessings I felt, the sense of gratitude of being back there after 43 years, almost to the day of when I, I had the experience 43 years ago. So it's a tremendous return to source. Let's take a look at a couple of the other photos from there. Yeah, oh gosh, it's such a beautiful story. And I'm so um, grateful that you were able to experience that and together with others. Okay, so let's see here. And, and she, you know, Shiva, Shiva actually said, it, it, of all the things she's ever done in the school, this was the, her most favorite thing. And, 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 <laughs> And uh, and actually, this fits into to one of the other broader themes that came through during these unexpected adventures, um, is wanting to reintroduce an apprenticeship program of, of training younger people how to you know go camping to these sites, these special sites. Because I'd have to say the three sites that most inspired this whole transmission started here. And then what we'll be talking about next is Fish Lake Valley, but also the one place I didn't get to go back to was the Wonderland of Rocks at, uh, at Joshua mm -hmm. Tree. Mm -hmm. But all places that um, uh, I know um, uh, we'll talk about Lizzie's experience in a moment, but Shiva and Mariana and Edmund and and then uh, and also Tony, Tony, who was fantastic. Yeah. Tony, uh, Shiva's partner, um, um, was so helpful to me, you know, when I was trying to navigate the rocks with a uh, my uh with my um old man knees <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so uh it was uh, the themes of this was the reinstituting of the of uh, uh having other people be able to take groups in our school back to these sacred sites that really inspired the whole the whole vision of the school mm. yeah, no so i find here, this here totally sitting, i was telling here this sorry sorry Nora. yeah no i find this totally fascinating when i saw uh, some of these pictures or even before when you uh, told me the story or parts of it it was literally my heart already open mm -hmm. and it was like oh I wish I was I had been there and it it just put such a strong focus again on the supreme importance of on the land experiences that that this uh, school and your teachings rest on and depend on to to such a, a big degree to such a great degree and i have not seen that anywhere else you know in well, the, the, the world the transmit i'll just uh, speak to that which is the transmission that came through uh, among many other things that happened in 81 was the commitment that i made at that point that if i was going to continue to do astrology it must be within the framework of uh, teaching people the night sky and having them be on the land with the sky and, and to be able to receive the new transmissions coming through and to not rely on left brain or Hellenistic or the astrology of 2000 years ago. So, because um, we're in a turning of the ages and, and the, the meanings are all shifting and changing as, and we're to be open to having what those new meanings are. 
Um, so let's just look at here's and a, here <laughs> we actually I mean here it really looks like you're just uh, reveling in your experience and you know saying yep here I am again and that is no accident yeah you know, a wonderful trick played on you and it was you know during Mercury retrograde which just somehow you know and then the Uranus impact somehow but it was also exactly at the point of the extreme out of bounds moon too yeah 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 so all yeah. of that coming together mm -hmm. and literally you know despite your knee issue carrying you to that place uh, totally unexpectedly someone oh we're going down this path and you know <clears throat> it, it's it's a miracle it really is a wonderful miracle it was now but even more but i didn't think this would be included in this sharing today because yeah. the events that happened right before that were equally um memorable to me and that mm -hmm. is that um before going up to visit my brother in portland uh, i was staying at the moon ranch mm -hmm. uh, uh, with um lizzie k moon who um uh, is also on like the treasurer i mean she's the, uh, the very important person in the school and and so she wanted to go up to one of the three places I named, Fish Lake Valley. Mm. So we drove up there. This was actually a place that I found on a personal, it was kind of like a vision quest, where I, the White Mountains called me over back in 97, 98. And I, I probably did 10, 15 groups there, including a lot of um, solo adventures there. And it's this an incredible petroglyph site mm. that is unmarked, I, I've, I've never seen any indication of it before, but it's but it is a um, a master site, and I'm I'm referring to a place um, that's in County Esmeralda of Nevada, which has a total population of 800 people. In fact, there's <laughs> one gas pump within 100 miles. Oh wow! Amazing. And the closest town, and we, we because uh, Lizzie's never camped before, so. Um, and I didn't have my camping equipment with me. So we, we had rooms at a motel in Tonopah, which is 45, 50 minutes away. And so we went down in the morning to see what it was like in the morning. And then we went back down because it was too hot in the afternoon at, at, in July or in August. So um, we um, then went back at 5 p.m. and stayed until about 11. Mm -hmm. And it was a completely clear... Um, nothing in the sky other than the Milky Way and the stars, you know, and uh, uh, it was a, 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 an opportunity to to get more insight about what we learned in Ohio with the with the uh, with the mounds and the cosmology of the journey of the soul. Uh, so being able to look right up and to see where the Milky Way branches at Deneb um, and and one branch goes to Ophiuchus, the other branch goes directly to Galactic Center and trying to get a sense of what that part of the journey of the soul was mm. and is. <clears throat> and so that was just a tremendous, tremendous experience. And and Lizzie also captured the um the whole essence of she wants to now I'm gonna get camping equipment. I'm coming back here. I want to do all this, you know. So so basically, she now has been initiated into the the old way these these old I say old ways, but you know, like which has been the foundation of our school. And so, what what it is that um, we now wish to share is a recording, uh, a little short video that Lizzie took as I was sitting. It was sort of like so. This this is like a master site, and. Uh, but there's a like a command seat, if we could say. It's actually a seat surrounded by remarkable petroglyphs, including one type of petroglyph that I've never seen anywhere else that marks, it's like 28 or 29 etchings that capture the entirety of the sun's path from December solstice to June solstice including a line right in the middle of the equinox. It, 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 I've done a videos on this particular site before, but this is a kind of an up to uh, just current moment, you know, cur current time about what it was like being there that night. And no one else showed up. It was completely um, untampered with sight. Still, the, the spirit presence that I've always felt there is still there, you know, like very welcoming, you know, like, 
uh, kind of like I'm glad you're all back. And not only that, the 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 what the clan of wild horses that are that live in the valley also showed up. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen the video. We're still working on the uh, sound quality of it. That wasn't that great. So we hope to get all of that up for anyone out there watching. And I've seen the video. So if you are out there and watching it as well. Um, uh, spot the, you can spot the horses in the background, so kind of to the right of uh, Daniel's head. In uh, it, you, you will see some small moving dots, and those actually, I thought, mm, that should be the horses. And Daniel confirmed, yes, it's the horses. So. Well, you know, and, and actually, after she recorded that with me, the right around sunset, um, I then um, gave her a, a task, which was to walk down and you'll see it in the video when you see the video there's like this long plateau directly toward december solstice and it's mm -hmm. sort of like a launching pad for the soul going to the west and so she walked this whole pathway it's at the end of that uh, plateau which are where are the equinox um uh, uh petroglyphs um mm -hmm. and uh and then she was really close to the horses there and she she walked down to the end of the plateau and went out and hung out with them. Oh, you know, so she had an experience so nice. of being with uh, with the wild horses that um, mm -hmm. are, we 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 were afraid they'd all been rounded up, but they they, they were still there living their wild ways. It was really special because they they one of them had greeted me the very first time I was there. Oh. Uh, where the very first time I went there, I spent the night after seeing first seeing the petroglyphs that i didn't really know much about the site at that point um but on the next morning i was walking across the plain and out of nowhere a wild horse came out of nowhere and ran right up to me and stood right in front of me about six feet away we just looked at each other for a few minutes and then it ran away and it turned out that if i had kept walking there was a rattlesnake right in front of me, coiled up, and so Whoa. it's a, so the, the the feeling I always had was that that ho horse had come to say, "Be present." Mm -hmm. There's a snake right in front of you. I mean, I can't oh. interpret it any other way. I've never had a wild one lone wild horse run up to me and just you know just look at me right in the eyes for a few minutes and then run off. And mm -hmm. there it was. There was the coiled rattlesnake. You know, so pretty oh, pretty. Wow. And so the horse was there at the beginning, and it was the, the and there was eight of them, including a baby, there um, uh, the mm -hmm. night that uh, we were there. So, anyway, I hope you enjoy. Yeah, it reminds me. It reminds me also of the mule that came up to us when we were at the Feywood Hot Spring Stone Circle. Uh, Rubbing, we also yes. had quite special experiences there, but uh, it's still a different thing to be completely out there in the wild, um, as you were at that particular site. And again, you know, I'm so happy that this miraculously well, uh, even, you know, manifested, but, uh, materialized for you. Even before we went to 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 uh, Fish Lake Valley in Nevada, um, we had gone back over to Faywood Hot Spring. And so mm -hmm. I had a meeting with um, Dave there and set up next year's event, which is now gonna be a week long um, in September. And he also was tremendously interested and was just really open to helping us put in the, the four more stones to mark the um, lunar standstill positions, you know, so we'll finally have, have a chance to complete the stone circle that was started back around 2000. Yeah, um, anyone watching again, take note, more on this will come as soon as we have more information, but uh, you can already yeah. mark your calendar, September next year, um, mm -hmm. Faywood Hot Springs to complete the incredible stone circle that Daniel designed there and has built with his um, late friend, um, Elon Yorwit, and yeah. uh, now to be hopefully aided as well by the current owner of Faywood Hot Springs, Dave Shirk, if I'm not right. mistaken. <laughs> Oh, the name. Sure, yeah, okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to get that in as well. And Daniel, thank you so, so much for sharing these stories. I hope everyone now enjoys um, the video iteration from actually that was filmed at Fish Lake Valley just like um, less than two weeks ago, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Sitting out at Fish Lake Valley with Daniel. Tell us a little bit about how he found 
<laughs> this place and what it means to him. It's truly marvelous to be back here again. I did not know whether for sure I'd ever, whether I'd, whether I'd be able to get back here. And changing the European plan gave me an opportunity to come back here and to introduce this magical place to Lizzie, who uh, you know, understands the importance of this place. Um, uh, I think it's been over five years since I've been here, um, and it was probably back in 1997, 1998, uh, I was 1997, 98, yeah, I was living in the Membrays River Valley, and we had to move, I was with my first wife, and uh, we were going to move to Nevada City, and I had a whole circle of people already in Nevada City, Grass Valley. And uh, <coughs> I was driving back and forth through Nevada between um, uh, uh, New Mexico, where Haywood Hot Springs area is, and Membrays Valley, to Nevada City, Grass Valley. And I kept seeing, when I was driving back and forth, um, the White Mountains. And every time I would see them, there was this here. Like, it drew me over. Um, by the way, we're here on a really precious evening. I mean, just all by, only us. There hasn't been any geoengineering, clear sky, no clouds in the sky. It's now very calm. The sun has just set. We have a little bit of night sky here tonight. But uh, anyway, I got this, the white man said, come, on, come over here sometime. And so at one time I did create it. A, a time frame of a, a, one of these drives where um, I had enough time to come down over here. I didn't know where I was going or anything. Um, I just knew I had to go over there, find a place to camp. And I was driving around Boundary Peak, Bishop, and uh, this whole area. And it was, nah, it's not the place, that's not the place. And then uh, finally it was really dark, started to get really dark, and I said, I gotta find a place to camp. And I just pulled over on this dirt road. I started driving down this dirt road. I said, this is the place. And I pulled over. I said, I'm starting to you know, set up camp. And I felt this presence behind me. And I turned around, and it was the sun. And there was no knowledge of this sun. It was unmarked. Um, I had seen petroglyphs of Fish Lake Valley before, but this was a different place. And uh, it uh, became a place where I would come and do solo experiences, uh, camping here and discovering more and more about the place. And it came to, to, to be, being here many times. It was a master site. And I'm sitting right at the solstice is. Um, and then I started bringing people here. We had camps here, you know, back in the early days of the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School. We'd camp out here at different times of the year. Um, one time, we came here, it was uh, the, the night, uh, we were able to see, a, uh, on the same night, uh, a, a total lunar eclipse and hell Bop comet um, uh, on the same night. Um, and, and in fact, one of the things that's really exciting as we're sitting here tonight, this evening, is that several times clans of wild, hor of wild horse clan mustangs would come through and we were wondering if um, they're still here. And sure enough, um, about 20 minutes ago, they, about eight of them started coming across the plane. We're hoping they come over and visit us. Um, we're not that far away, actually. Um, and so this, I'm referring to this as a master site. Um, I, I've previously done a video of, about this site, um, and so we have a lot of photos um, of it, but Lizzie has taken more photos of what her discoveries have been here. And I call it a master site because from where I'm sitting, every alignment 
is, is, is here, the solstices and equinoxes. And remarkably, I came here during the 2006 time period of, a, of the previous lunar standstill. Um, um, we're recording this in uh, 2024. Uh, and I was out here on the night of the northern um, extreme. And you can, you can probably pan over to that um, uh, ridge over there. And it's really only at that extreme, uh, the lunar standstill, the northern extreme, the moon goes right along that ridge. It just walks up that left ridge. Any other moonrise is all somewhere on the long ridge. So it's only at that extreme point that it's over there and it, and it kind, of, kind of just crawls up along the edge of that. And I've we have photos of that. Yes, so it even is. Wow. I mean, the massive sight. And even tracks the lunar standstill, right? So, um, also there's, a, there's other portions of this site, not just where we're sitting here now. Um, there's a uh, there's a long ridge that clearly could be seen as a ceremonial um, a, a kind of a launching path, and it's right toward the toward the, the, the solstice, toward the um, the uh, December solstice point. And then there's alignments, there's petroglyphs out there that align with the, with equinox. And at the equinox, uh, there's uh, the, set up in such a way that shadows, um, the way the stones are set, go across a petroglyph precisely at, at the equinox. Um, but uh, to me, that's the area of, um, in, in the traditions of, the, of this land, toward the west is where it's like a, a leaving place. You know, the soul takes off. And, and when you walk that ridge, you can actually, ah, uh, Taking off toward the west, you know, where the where the soul is taking flight. Um, I even at one point was thinking that when I die, I want my ashes spread there, uh, so that I need to have somebody who knows this place <laughs> that at least part of my ashes can be spread there, which is where uh, that's, uh, Lynn won't come here, so <laughs> I have to be somebody else to spread my ashes here. I think probably think she would anyway. Um, <laughs> And then also there's another wonder here, uh, an area that I've never seen anything like it. Um, and there's petroglyphs all kind of pointing out kind of where it is, which is a, it's a, it's a stone that you sit on and it's cut in a certain way where you can sit on it. And um, I had a sense of it, but I've had been here with, um, with women before that kind of that had the same feeling about it. So I think so did you, that it's a birthing seat. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the, the, the woman's area over there, you know, the, and, and then over to my left is an area that it seems like it's where the, the trainers, it's a training site, you know, like a children's site. Um, and then uh, they would get, so this whole, this place, I call it a master site, but it, it's a mystery school itself. You know, everything is here. And of course, one of the things about this area is, is uh, you were panning in the, the valley here. Not that long ago, it was underwater. So this site, it was a lake. It was a large lake. So this, this site would have been right on the edge of a lake. Mm -hmm. And looking up toward um, this remarkable mountain range, of which most of those, in fact, if you look at the, the one you're looking at now, is White Mountain, which is um, some say is the highest mountain in, in, in the continental U.S. Well, not not uh, Alaska higher. It's like a controversy. Is Whitney higher or is the White Mountain higher? They're over 14,000 feet. And then Boundary Peak, those twin peaks over there that uh, go, that figure into the petroglyphs here, um, uh, are over 13,000. We are currently at about, uh, this is uh, about 4,000 feet, feet here. So it's about 15 degrees cooler than Phoenix right now. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> but it's, we can feel coolness in here. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm just thrilled to be able to get back here. And, uh, and I should also mention for those who are watching this um, uh, that this is the place. I came out here by myself one time. <clears throat> and this is where I wrote, sitting right here, where I'm sitting right now, is where I wrote to the, um, the vows for certification. So anyone who's had either foundational or full certification, the particular vows uh, for 
um, the graduation were written right, right here at this spot. So here we are in 2024. A lot's happened from 2006. A lot's happened from 1987. Um, actually, I gotta check this out. Did I first see this? It might have been at 97, 98 which would have been the center point in the great turning, <coughs> in mm -hmm. the great turning of the ages, um, which was in May of 1998. I, wow, I've never thought of looking that up to see when I first saw this, uh, mm -hmm. when that was that I came here and, and uh, had that experience of finding the site. Um, it, it just had a, a, a complete overwhelming feeling how happy the spirits here were that um, there were some of us that remembered <laughs> mm -hmm. what what this was about and, and what magic was happening here. And <clears throat> although I'm not a um, technical archaeoastronomer and I don't have my um, the, the autodite or the, the big machine that you, you can to calibrate exact dates and all that, um, it seems to me based on the little bit of a change in the ecliptic that when this was built, um, uh, basing this on where the, uh, the petroglyph illumination is at Equinox, that it was probably about 2,000 years ago is when, when this was uh, built. <clears throat> so welcome back, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything you want to say? I would just like to say how meaningful it is to be sitting here with you in this seat at the place where you wrote those, um, the mission statement, the vows of the shamanic astrologer. They've, uh, they've definitely been meaningful to me in that when I heard them for the first time in Oracle, it just like took me and I knew that this is, you know, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to say myself one day and I have so well, we certainly want to carry on these traditions and it was just such a, a completely uh, a tremendous delight to be able to have your um, interest and enthusiasm to come on this uh, journey and to, we didn't camp this time but, um, <laughs> but uh, we have a motel and uh, uh, we have rooms in uh, Tonopah and uh, we just driven down here in the morning checked it out in the morning and now we're here in this evening and We'll be going back to Phoenix tomorrow, but uh, what a perfect night in order to, 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 to have this this last experience here. Hopefully it's not my last experience here. I hope not uh, either, and so so we'll camp next time. I've been challenged. I will I will become a camper, and we will be having uh, more gatherings at Fish Lake Valley. So Thank you so much, Daniel, for introducing this beautiful place and for telling us the story.